Hello everyone, this is Tanishk Singh in front of you and I am here to teach you about earprint. So let's start. This is the table of content we are going to study about. So let's start with introductory part. Earprint is the study of shapes of the ear lobules and the tips of the ear as well as it also tells us about the hardness or the softness of helix and the labules. And it also tells us about the hairiness of helix and tragus part. All these characters I told you about an ear print, these are known as the individual characteristic of an ear print. Now, the shape of ear lobes and tips may differ in different people. Some may have broad wing and some may have wide, some may bear loose hanging lower lobes, some may even have lower lobe fixed to their face, and in some people, whole ear has a tendency to come forward, while in other people, ear appears nearer to the occipital region. Now the history part, well, the history of earprint starts with the name of Fritz Hirschi, a scientist from Bern, Switzerland. He was one of the first people to use an earprint for a uh, crime investigation in 1965. Hirschi analyzed two earmarks at the scene of burglary in Bien, Switzerland. And in the years to follow, several reports of personal identification using earprints recovered at the crime scene are as follows. Number one, Dubio's 1988, and the second case from Hammer 1986, and the third case from Kennerly 1998A, and the fourth case from Wanderlucht 1998B, and the fifth one was Peseshu and Tanislav 1997. Continue to continue with history. Your marks offered a lead during forensic investigation. Now the judges in Netherlands used them as a tool to pry confession from a defendant. And that happened in Egan 1999. Now, in the United Kingdom, Kennerly 1998A encountered over 100 of crime cases that involves ear print, latent ear print, between early 1996 and September 1998. In 2001, ear print got the admissibility in the court like fingerprint. Fear ID project. Now, what is the Fear ID project? It is a forensic ear identification research project which was commenced in 2002 to analyze the use of ear print evidence in the criminal investigation. The project was sponsored by European Union and was composed of nine institutes that belong to United Kingdom, Italy and Netherlands. So, uh, some limitations faced by the Fear ID project are such as the methodology used in the project where donors have to press their ear against a glass plate to uh, deposit the print at the scene, which is not uh, valid to you for which is not valid to use for forensic investigation today. This is due to the inability to control the force that suspects place on the glass. Suspects may not cooperate, and prints may not be representative of reality. Another classification, classification of ear print based on the shapes of uh, lobes and, uh, and tips of the ear. Uh, there are seven types of ear print, uh, ear print and you can say ear shapes such as square ear, pointed ear, narrow ear sticking out and round ear with free lobe, attached lobe and the last one is broad lobe. Now how to collect an ear print? To collect an ear print, donor have to press their ear up to a glass plate uh, and were instructed to listen for a sound. Then the ear print was lifted with a black gel filter which is known as a uh, Fear ID black gel. The research project aimed to standardize a method of ear print collection and accurately deposit the print and ear may live at the crime scene. Now the limitations that faced by the ear print analysis and even now there are limitations we can face. The ear print analysis is not used as a valid and reliable method such as fingerprint uh, because the, the lack of scientific research and in present day the forensic analysis commonly uses the DNA testing methods as it is uh, more reliable in court. Now uh, what are the factors that can affect an ear print? Number one, the timing. Timing of pressing the ear, like how long the suspect's ear was in contact with the surface and the applied force is also responsible for uh, forming an ear print. Now smudging or sliding occurring on face. The quality of sur uh, surface that also plays a major role 
in affecting uh, analysis and analysis secretion of oils or waxes on the ear environment factors such as weather or climate the method of ear print lifting this is one of the most important factor that can affect the analysis like some people or uh, examiner they may use different materials instead of ear id black gel lift uh, lifters storage of information like software used today and the loss of details when prints are transferred to a digital form now admissibility in court there is a lack of jurisprudence about this doctrinal studies and the studies relating to comparative law on the significant of ear print in the forensic investigation ear print are not accepted and they are not as reliable as dna testing or uh, fingerprint in court cases in court cases definition used to define the evidence of ear print are not completely assertive they don't pinpoint to uh, suspect wording it has wording such as there is a high probability the ear print was made by this suspect that uh, that means they don't pinpoint at one particular direction that this person is the perpetrator they just give a direction that this person can be the perpetrator now the notable cases notable cases of ear print identification fails to convict a suspect uh, which was include which includes a case of mark dalagar he was a murderer he murdered in united kingdom that was a case from uh, 1998 so the dalagar was convicted for murder on the foundation of an ear print and in january 2004 the conviction was dropped due to the dna testing and the dna found his, and the dna testing that found his dna that doesn't match with the ear mark found at the scene of crime that means basically the ear print found at the crime scene that uh, that shows that this belongs to someone else and dna testing shows that uh, the criminal or the perpetrator was mark dalaga now what can be the future aspects of ear print ear print analysis needs further research and scientific methods to uh, for improvement to ensure analysis uh, which is more reliable and valid due to the improvements in technology today the future of ear prints analysis to be used widely in criminal investigation if it more possible there are still fundamental questions that raises to consider when analyze an ear print there needs to be a greater understanding of ear print feature and factors that how they can improve an individual character or individual variation in an ear print that can pinpoint to a proper perpetrator of a crime uh, of a criminal uh, sorry a crime i mean sorry for blurring uh, subjectivity also has to be accepted when scientific experts analyze ear prints and make conclusions thank you